Today we'll be looking at the life wire of success. The life wire of what? Success. What is success? It is the realization of a worthwhile goal. Success simply impacting your world positively. It is becoming a plus on a daily basis. Is it a part of the joy of the shining light that shines the morning to a perfect day? Proverbs 4 18. So each day is supposed to be better than the previous. You are not just passing through, but you're leaving an indelible mark. He said, Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. Daniel 11 32. It is simply doing exploits, continuous exploits. And I know exploits will not cease in your life. But today, we are going to look at the life wire of success. What is the life wire? What is the word? Of success. The life wire of success is gratitude. Is what? Gratitude. It is essentially a virtue for success. You cannot be great until you are grateful. I repeat, you can never be great until you are grateful. What is gratitude? It means the quality of being thankful. Readiness to show appreciation for and to return kindness. It simply means appreciating God for his goodness. For what he has done, what he will do, and what he can do. Gratitude is a learned attitude. You learn to be grateful. It is not a gift. There is no gift of thanksgiving. You learn it. You do what? You learn to be grateful. Why you should be grateful to God? Because in life, it is not how far and how smart. He said, by strength shall no man prevail. 1 Samuel 2, 9. That you are strong does not determine how you become successful. It's not of him that will and not of him that not of God that showed mercy. Romans 9, 16. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11, so your skill is not also enough. I return and saw under the sun, that the race is not to the swift, that is it to the strong, yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding. But God says it's not of men of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. It is only those who are grateful to God that will be full of his grace. The more of God's grace that will bestow for success depends on how grateful you are to God. And I pray your understanding will open today. Now, if you look at the man, for instance, called Paul, Paul was a man of very small stature. If you know the story of Paul, he was very small, so a smallish man. And he had a very rough background, the past. His past was very rough. But how come of all the apostles after Jesus Christ was the most impactful? Paul was the most impactful after Jesus. And Paul made a statement. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10. He said, by the grace of God, I am what I am. He said, whatever I am, God's grace made me. That's why I'm great. May you understand how to appreciate God's grace and I know that will make you great in the name of Jesus. Myself standing to preach to you, I'm a product of grace. A man's altitude will be defined by his level of gratitude. 
Because when you are grateful, you become graceful. And when you are graceful, you become successful. I repeat. When you are grateful, you become graceful. When you are graceful, you become successful. Only the grateful be full of his grace. All those full of his grace can be successful in life. You will never fail. Amen. No man depreciates in life appreciating God. No way. Now look at the man David. David was the most successful and greatest king in his time. But this man was so thankful and praiseful. God took him from nowhere to become somebody. He is taking and changing someone's position after today. Amen. The man was keeping sheep and yet he said, Father, I thank you. He was praising God, keeping sheep and God made him a shepherd. And you know why? While studying, I discovered something. That while come people are very thankful, they enjoy God's grace more than others. You know the reason? Enter into his gates, into his cause. Now, that means for God to open his doors, for your prayers to be answered, for anything to happen, you must be thankful and praiseful. Is that true? So, people who are thankful and praiseful, they don't suffer God's company. They have access to God 247. And if they have access to God, then everything can happen on the spot. Such people don't ever have stress. They just get things done with ease. Because they have the automatic line to God. When they die, it answers. I have phones, but I have one phone that my wife, Bishop Oedekbo, few people call. I don't off it 24-7. If it's off, then I'm, I'm, I'm either airborne or I'm in church. The only two things that make me off that phone is airborne church. The, even when I'm sleeping, it's on. I can off every phone. I don't off it. Because my wife may call, Bishop Oedekbo may call. These two people I must answer. These are two people I, I owe to answer. Any other person I can answer you after. God can't call me on phone, so there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you are thankful and praiseful, you have God's special line. That means say, enter into his call. That means any time you call, he answers. He does not off that line. The reason many of us can't get access to God. Woo, woo, woo. Every small thing. Your face will make bidding. Shout hallelujah. He chose David from keeping who? Sheep. In Psalm 78, 70 to 71. Also his servant and took him from the sheep falls. From following the earth with great young, he brought him to feed Jacob, his people, and Israel, his inheritor. He carried him. He carried David from nowhere. From where? Now I'm reading Psalm 78, 70 to 71. It says, a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praise of thy name, O Moses. Appreciate God verbally. Appreciate him publicly. Appreciate him privately. Appreciate him at all times. Give him quality thanks generously. You see God do things gloriously. Thank God cheerfully. And you will never see any reason to regret. May someone's story change today. Amen. In Psalm 103, 1 to 5, he said, Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. Who healeth all thy who redeemed a life from destruction? Who connected thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? He saw you through the flood. He saw you through the fire. He was with you when everybody left you. Give him thanks. Tell him thank you. You see yourself succeeding without sweat. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say satisfy the man with good things. So that our youth is really like the eagles. But all came with bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all his benefits. If you are too big to be grateful, you will end up as a great fool like the rich fool. You know the rich fool? Luke chapter 12. 
He was so stupid, he ended stupid. Samuel Johnson said, gratitude is the fruit of great cultivation. You do not find it amongst gross people. Unquote. Few things to know about gratitude. Few things to know about what? Gratitude. Number one, gratitude is not a feeling but a fragrance. That is what I mean. Gratitude is required for entering the presence of God. For entering the presence of God. Psalm 100 verse 4. Gratitude is required for entering the presence of God. Enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Number two, gratitude unexpressed can be likened to ingratitude. Any gratitude you don't express is ingratitude. Is what? Somebody gives you something and you just don't say thank you. What will happen? Hmm? Hmm? Someone gave you something and you don't say thank you. That's ingratitude. It's not true. I forgot to tell you thank you. No. Have you given somebody something and the person says, I forgot to thank you? The person did not appreciate it. It's a sign that that person did not appreciate what you gave to the person. Because if you appreciate, you immediately you say, thank you. You can't forget. Nobody forgets gratitude. If anybody says, I forgot to thank you, it's a sign that the person did not appreciate what you did. Three, gratitude unspoken is gratitude unknown. Number four, timely gratitude is necessary. Timely gratitude what? Timely gratitude is necessary. Gratitude is not only essential, but must be given on time. You give it at the right time. In Jeremiah 13, 15 to 16, it says, Hear ye and give ear, be not proud, for the Lord had spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God before he caused darkness. And before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains, and while you look for light, he turned it into shadow of death and make it cross darkness. Say, God forbid. He said, give glory to the Lord your God before he caused what? Darkness. So thank him before you get into temptation. Many people's problem is not the devil. That just is the life for you of what? Success. Oh, let me tell you, it is not how you walk. God hates ingratitude. I'll show you from scriptures. Don't go further. Everyone's challenge in 95% is traceable to ingratitude. Not, not the devil. Most of us will just bind and cast and bind and cast. Anytime God does something for you to appreciate him, you begin to fall into trouble. You begin to get into temptations. I'll tell you things gratitude can do. Things gratitude can things gratitude can do. Number one, gratitude, that thanksgiving, moves the hand of God to release your blessings. To release your what? Gratitude moves the hand of God to release blessings on us. When you thank him, you move his hand to release blessings upon him. May God bless everyone we thank him. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. Number two, God preserves the blessing through thanksgiving. Through gratitude. God preserves what? The blessing. Yes, he has blessed you, but the way to preserve that blessing is through what? In Malachi 2, 1 to 3, he said, Now, O ye priests, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, I will not lay it to heart. To give glory, what? Say the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you. I will cause your blessing. Yeah, I have caused them already because ye do not lay it to heart. So if you don't thank God, the blessing will turn to what? Curse. curse. I got the contract. I don't know why all these problems are happening. The when he gave the contract, he did not thank him. I don't know. God gave me husband, but this man has started drinking. When the man gave, he not even say thank you.
You will drink, but not alcohol. You won't see a, a bo cigar man. A, a bo cigar. Please thank God. <laughs> thank God. Tell them, thank God. Number three, God multiplies the blessing through thanksgiving. God multiplies what? Through thanksgiving. Everything, no matter how small, thank God for it, it will multiply. Jesus, you are not the first to pass through challenges. Jesus passed through challenges. They came to him and they said, Master, there are 5,000 men here, excluding women and children, but there's no food to feed them. Maybe you're here, the landlord has given you quick notice, and all you have is just 40,000, when the house rent is 500,000. Boy, if you know what to do, you won't panic. Because you are not the first. Some of you, maybe you, all you have is 30,000. And then the, the project before you is 3 million. Jesus had five loaves. How many loaves? And then before him were thousands of people. They say 5,000 men, excluding women and children. Take note though. And every crusade, women are always more. So if 5,000 were men, just imagine children and women. With five loaves. With what? Now, some of you, before you came to church, now you have grumbled. I've done seven days fasting. And I don't know what is happening. I don't know, oh God, look at me. Even as I'm coming, there's only 1,000 in my pocket. Are you still in heaven? <laughs> but if you know how to thank him without 1,000, before you leave service, it will multiply. How God will do it is not your business. Nothing will multiply without thanksgiving. In John chapter 6, 11 and 12, look at Jesus, what he did. Follow his pattern. He said, be imitators of God. Ephesians 5, verse 1. So imitate him. Look, look at Jesus, what he did. He said, Father, Jesus took the loaves, and when he heard giving thanks, take note. The loaves, listen, listen carefully. Jesus did not give thanks when the loaves multiplied. Listen. You, oh God, if you bless me, that's for babies. The loaves are not multiplied when you give what? With the 1,000 in your pocket, tell him thank you. With the one shot, tell him thank you. He did not thank the Father when the Lord, he said, when Jesus had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples. And disciples to them that were set down. Likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And they were filled. And he said unto his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain and not to be lost. It was when he said, Father, thank you, the loaves began to multiply. So when you, now, we are not like this, though. If you think we are like this, you better tell the stories. We began to thank God. Everything we thank God. We will have 20 members. I come back and say, let's thank God that today 20 people came. Father, thank you. We moved to 50. Father, thank you. We move to 100. Father, thank you to 1,000. Father, thank you to 10,000. Father, thank you 100,000. Today, from this church, we talk to millions all over the world. Nothing good will multiply until you thank God. If you want that small shop to go to two shops, thank him. You want that kiosk to be a supermarket, Thank him. You want one shot to become a suit. Thank him. You want your son who is struggling in school to be intelligent. Thank him that he ever gave him brain because there are some who are mad. And they don't count a madman in census. I told a boy on which on Sunday, as a young man, he was born with some deformity. I said, You'll be a great man. Because you are not handicapped. He was shocked. I said, the only people handicapped are only people with mental deformity. That's why in census, they count even those on which you don't count mad people. You will never see them count mad people. They have everything complete. But because their brains are off, they don't count them as citizens. But they count the real people. So that shows that the only people who are really deformed, handicapped, are not those on which you The handicapped person is somebody without a mind. So when a man is mad, they say it's useless. You are not useless because you're a witcher. 
Roosevelt became a president four times, only president four times on wheelchair. It's only in this part of the world where wheelchair people beg. Other parts, wheelchair people are very super intelligent. It's the brain that makes a man, not his hands and legs. Otherwise, mad people would have been useful. Is there anything that is not in a madman? Huh? He has everything, but he's useless <laughs> because of his. So if your son is coming out Omega in the class, thank God, then he will become Alpha. <laughs> if your son is what? Omega, thank God, then he will become what? Alpha. Alpha. Omega is last. <laughs> he's the beginning and the end. So if your son is Omega in the class, thank God, then God make him Alpha. And make him first. Don't say, God, I thank you for this, my boy, that you gave him brain. That he has brain, thank God. Don't say, she did what, block head. <laughs> they, by blocking the head with your mouth, it become, if it was blocked before it becomes stone, 